I'm with Jody Brandt today. Hi, Jody. Jody is uh, known well to the Country Day community as a trustee, uh, as a parent, um, and as an alum as well. Uh, Jody, what, what are your many different connections with Country Day? My, I, I started at Country Day uh, in pre-kindergarten back in the early to mid-1970s and, and was a lifer at Country Day. Graduated in 1987. Um, and then uh, both my daughters started there in kindergarten. Uh, Samantha graduated last year uh, in the class of 19, and, and Nora is uh, finishing her junior year right now and is in the class of 21. And, and since they've been back, I've served in a number of different volunteer roles, uh, including on alumni council uh, and on the board, and currently serve as the president of the board of trustees. Very good. And you're in your second year in that position, is that right? Yeah. With one more to go. Yeah. Feels like a lot longer. Yes, very good. And how are you and your family doing in these pretty unusual times? Um, we really have, uh, thankfully, uh, not much to complain about. Uh, Samantha, who is finishing her freshman year, is home doing college remotely. So it's been nice for Debbie and I to have her home. I think she's a little less excited uh, to be home. And uh, you know, everybody's adjusting to uh, the new world, and, and, uh, but we're happy everybody's healthy and everybody's got enough to do at the moment, and so that's, that's all good. So. That's great. You have several different roles, as you said, alum, father, but in your role as a trustee and as a president of the board, what is it that a board does at Country Day? I know there are a lot of individuals in our community who are pretty familiar with the board of trustees, but there may be some who are not quite as familiar. What, is the, what are the roles of board members and what is the responsibility of this organization? And, and what's its relationship to the school? Yeah, so, so the board um, serves in some ways in a supervisory, in some ways a collaborative role with, with the head of school and with Tony and, and a lot of the uh, cabinet level personnel. Um, it, it really has three primary functions as do most boards. Um, those being a fiduciary function to make sure we're operating uh, the school in, in the most efficient way possible to make sure we're staying true to our mission. Um, it has a strategic role in helping to think a little bit longer term and, and, and looking out maybe three to five years as to the things we could be doing um, um, to further advance our mission. And then there's also a a generative role, kind of thinking big picture. What what can we look at um, coming down the road? What things could be disruptive to our operations? What uh, things we need to be trying to get ahead of the curve on um, to think about and, and address? Great. Well, you, we'll talk about the COVID-19 pandemic in just a moment. But before this pandemic even arrived, what were some of the generative ideas that during your presidency these last two years, the board has been thinking about. I know that you and I, together with the board and some of the cabinet members have been in a few retreats. What were some of these bigger ideas that we were thinking about even before uh, we went into this uh, response to the COVID-19 pandemic? I, I think um, th there've been a number and, been a, and, and we have a contributions from a number of different people on the board that push us to think about things in different ways how we deliver services, um, what the value is of an education at an independent school versus what you could get at a, at a public school um, or at other independent schools in town, how we, how we charge and how we think about how we charge for the services we provide, um, what can we anticipate in, um, in the generation of parents that now have kids that are that are much younger. Um, the parents of the seniors are almost in a completely different generation than the, than the parents who have kids in the early childhood uh, center or in the uh, pre-primary grades. And so how do we anticipate what their needs and their views of education and, and what they're demanding in education for their kids? Um, how the world is changing and how we need to prepare what our students need to be to prepared to be able to do in the world, which is much different than it was when I graduated in 1987. And, and it was different for my daughters who are graduating now, and it'll be different for the kids that'll be graduating 10 years from now. 
Absolutely, and and seem the change seems to be picking up its pace as well in terms of yes. uh, what will be required of those students. If you think though back to 1987, and then you think about your own daughter's experiences, are there certain elements of that experience that remain and that you hope will be in Country Day 10 or 20 years, right? So you spoke about some of the elements of the school that we might need to think about changing and adapting. Are there other, on the other side of the coin, are there certain elements about the school that were present when you were a student in your daughters and even in the future that you hope will still be there? Yeah, uh, I think the um, ability to think critically, to, to understand the data um, that you are being provided in whatever setting and to be able to analyze it, question it, um, use it appropriately to help you in whatever you're doing. I think the ability to work at, in teams, to collaborate with others um, is a skill set that I started to learn he, at Country Day and is a skill set that I've continued to develop throughout, throughout my, my work life. And, and I think it's a skill set that, that maybe we teach even better now than we did then, but it was important then as well. And then I think it, the ability to providing opportunities for students to, to lead, to be in leadership type roles. Um, and, and, and to me, that doesn't just mean being captain of a team or president of a club. It means being able to figure out what your role is within the club to, or the team to most, uh, to give it the best chance as a team to succeed as a, as a group. So I think those, those opportunities are important. And, and as I look back now, uh, to me, those may have been some of the most valuable um, opportunities I had while I was at Country Day. Great. It's interesting to hear you talk about leadership. As you know, one of our subcommittees on the board that has both board members and also members of the cabinet and the uh, teaching uh, and faculty and uh, staff here rather, is CD100, which is a committee thinking about the school in its hundredth year, which is not too far away in 2026. And one of the thoughts is thinking about how we can continue to adapt. You mentioned generative thinking a moment ago and that the CD100 committee, as we're getting closer to the centennial, is thinking about our school's mission and that leadership may be a key piece in that uh, mission as we not totally redo, we have a wonderful mission, but at least to readjust it for the current times. Is that something you're, you're hopeful that will be a uh, part of this work? Yeah, uh, and, and I think it, I've been thinking about it a lot this year from a couple of different perspectives. One, as you know, Tony, in the fall, um, we had the opportunity to go down to Louisville for uh, a conference and one of the speakers we heard um, talked about the components of leadership and it resonated with me um, and, and was not entirely intuitive in terms of those, uh, those characteristics. And, and so I've been thinking about it since that time. And, and as we've gone through uh, this crisis with the pandemic over the last few months, it has occurred to me that leadership really matters um, in, in life in general, but in a time of a crisis, it, it is um, clear to me when in situations where we have quality leaders and quality leadership that can help navigate that crisis, um, it, it just becomes that much more important. And, and when there are uh, gaps in leadership, um, the, uh, impacts and the costs of those gaps in leadership are that much more devastating. Mm. That's, a, that's a great way of uh, putting it. So let's talk a little bit then about this current pandemic and the school's closure. As you know, we're thinking about now the 2021 school year. We're almost done with this school year. We have just a few weeks left and we're, sh we're, we're shifting our thinking now towards the summer and then the next school year as well. Has, will the board's role or responsibilities change? How has the board uh, thought about supporting during our current Country Day Connected period of time, but also thinking about this next school year? Yeah, I, I think there are a couple things that are really important. Uh, number one, I think um, the board has functioned very well um, over, over the past over the recent years in terms of dealing with whatever issues have come up. And, and there've been some that haven't been anticipated. There've been some that you would expect. And I think having 
built trust between the administration of the school, the head of school, and the board is extremely important because if there if that didn't exist, um, it it can make it much harder to make decisions in a crisis. And so we've I think we've had that so that that's a benefit going in. Um, I think um, with this crisis, things are changing sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes even more often uh, than every day. And, and so to be able to pick up the phone, for you and I to be able to talk and communicate and get on the same page is, is extremely important. Um, we've had a working subcommittee of the board that we can bounce ideas off of um, and, and keep them abreast of what's going on and, and, and get their thoughts along the way, um, which has been helpful. We've had um, a couple other committees that have met regularly to talk about issues and stay on board. And, and so I think in part, it is um, helpful to the administration to get a feel that they're moving in the right direction. Um, it's helpful to set guardrails. I feel like the board sets guardrails so that we don't veer too far off course from our mission as we're trying to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the board can provide uh, support um, for um, the, the uh, cabinet team and for you as you go through this and, and kind of reinforce where you're thinking. And then on top of that, I think the board, and this gets more into the generative thinking, can, can push the school to look at the opportunities that are out there through this crisis, um, to push us to stretch as far as we can go to think about how we deliver services and how some of the things we're doing in this crisis um, can be adapted to use in the future, whether we're in a crisis situation or not. And, and you know, it's really easy at times to let the moment dominate what needs to get done. And I think with the right focus from the board and from you, we can look appropriate out at appropriately out at the longer term and even further as to how this changes education in general and and how um, an independent school can adapt to really be in the best possible uh, situation to succeed for our families in the future. Yeah, that, I think that's where very well put. Uh, you know, the instinct is to think about the fiduciary responsibilities, which are critical at this moment, but to think about those only and not to simultaneously be thinking generatively as well. So, so seeing the opportunity ahead. And that certainly is something that I think our board is doing really, really well. Jody, what do you think uh, in terms of for Cincinnati, just the, our city generally, the Queen City, in a post-pandemic world? Do you think that our way of life will be uh, radically different? Uh, let's hope this um, vaccine is discovered soon and, and this threat is behind us soon. But regardless of that time frame, do you, uh, as a native Cincinnatian, as a graduate of Country Day and, and somebody who knows and loves the city, do you think that there will be a, a different way of life? Uh, I, I think, I think there will be um, in, in a lot of ways. I think it has, for me and, and, and for my business, it, in some ways it's made me realize I can deliver a lot of my services without having to sit in an office downtown. And so that may, may help provide some efficiencies um, in how I deliver services. I think the other thing that it's hit home for all of us is that how important connecting with people is to whatever we do, whether it's deliver education, whether it's serve on a nonprofit board, or whether it's work with clients, and figuring out um, new and innovative ways to be able to connect and stay connected with people um, has, been, uh, uh, has been exciting and has been a, a fun part of this. I've, uh, I've got a group of uh, close friends from college that we we keep in touch but we don't get together all that often and I'll talk to you know probably three or four of them three or four times a year but through this crisis now and I think like a lot of groups we've set up zoom calls and we almost get on and, and most of us are on every 
every week. And so that's been fun to reconnect uh, with those people as well. And, uh, and, and so I think there'll be some positives that come out of this long term. Um, but I think we will not be returning to things exactly as they were. Uh, it's certainly a tragedy and a tragic set of events that are, are affecting us, but there are silver linings uh, in certain parts of this experience. I, I certainly have felt the same with friends, but also with family members. My boys, as you know, are at home and I wish they were having their college experience, but it's great to have them around the dinner table a little bit more often. Again, maybe they'd rather, I'm sure they'd rather be at college, but, but for, for Lucian, for me. Well, thank you so much, Jody, for, for spending a little time today, but also for your service uh, to Country Day. Um, as the head of the school, I can say that I feel fully supported by the board, but also supported uh, by your leadership. And uh, people should know that you and I are, are, from my point of view, partners. And we really spend a lot of time together uh, talking about the school and talking about education and talking about kids. And sure, sometimes we're managing and uh, navigating some challenges, but there are other times where we're just thinking about the wonderful things about Country Day and how we can continue to make this a wonderful school for, for those future generations as well. So I wanna make sure just to thank you and let everybody in the Country Day community know uh, what a super job you're doing in, in the presidency, although you've had a, a, few, uh, a few more things on your plate than most presidents do. Well, I, I appreciate that and I've, I've really enjoyed our partnership as well. And, and the more we talk about and start to look into the future, uh, from this crisis, the more I can see it as a, as a huge opportunity for Country Day to demonstrate its, its value in the educational community in Cincinnati and, and really in, in the country as a whole. So yeah. thank great. you. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thanks, Tony.